Teardown time. This is a digital caliper way of measuring distance quite precisely. If you take all the plastic housing off, you're left with two circuit boards. Uh, one here, which has an encoder, and one here, which has a digital integrated circuit hiding under the black blob. Uh, and some really interesting uh, details on the artwork of the device. Let's uh, take a study of this and uh, see how it works. All right, so there's a black epoxy blob which has an integrated circuit. We'll take that off in a moment, uh, but before we do that, let's study what the circuit board's doing. It's driving eight signals along here uh, on a pattern, and uh, we'll see that that pattern's pretty significant uh, in a moment. They have sort of a stagger on them. And if you flip the circuit board over, you can see that this uh, pattern is uh, replicated on some small fingers here. And basically, it's driving some signals out. Now, these are going to couple in capacitively onto the circuit board that's behind it. And then what happens is that this uh, strip here picks up all the signals that's being coupled. Now, as you can see, since it's actually going to pick up a whole bunch of signals, there's going to be some, some sort of discrimination so it can figure out what's going on. The other thing about the strip that's fairly interesting, it looks like there's a pattern of two fingers. And if I just highlight it, the fingers on the bottom here were under red are all connected together like a sort of um, uh, common potential point to keep the signals from interfering. The uh, drivers are all sitting on this side here. The pickup is up here for signals. So looks like it's driving out a series of signals along these fingers here. And then it's picked up here. So let's uh, study what these signals look like. All right, so there's eight outputs coming from this ASIC driving signals. I'll just insert a picture of uh, the, the first one that I'm probing. It looks like a repeating pattern. You can see a low pulse here and then another low pulse here. There's about 64 bit times between these two pulses. And if we just zoom in a little bit here, we can see that um, the pulse, for example, will be uh, quite high uh, here. A little bit less high here and then there's what appears to be a 50 percent duty cycle we can see what looks like an inverted signal uh basically it's unusually low here and here here and back to 50 percent duty cycle and uh, if i add a scope probe and we look at this one here what we're doing is we're going to step across all uh, eight of them see if there's any sort of correlation on those uh, signals so here we have this next signal here it looks like it's basically a clone of the signal above it same sort of pattern with the uh, lower portions into 50% duty cycle. The difference is it seems to be offset in time, and it's probably occurring earlier, but basically stepped off. Let's uh, go down to the next one on the pattern and see what happens. So here we are stepping down the pattern further, and what happens is it seems to be just another offset version of it. I expect it's the same signal, but it's been basically offset in time. Here's the one in the fourth one. Here's the one in the fifth one, and the next one and the next one, and the uh, final one. So it looks like there's basically the same signal, and then basically it's, it's a delayed version uh, sent down uh, in eight different locations. So to sort down what we're seeing here, I've modeled the uh, waveforms in SPICE in a piecewise linear file. Let me just zoom in here so we can see what's uh, going on. There's basically 13 pulses with a 50% duty cycle, two pulses with a higher duty cycle, 13 pulses with low, a same 50% duty cycle, and then two with a lower. And of course, you may ask us what's going on. Uh, because we're basically coupling a signal across the capacitance, you have to have AC signals. And this model here, I got about the driver models, the simple voltage source. And then I modeled the two plates sliding past each other as the capacitor, and then just some resistance. And if we pop, pop over to SPICE and uh, look at the waveform for the output, you can see what happens when you have higher duty cycles. The waveform rises above the baseline and we have the lower ones that goes below the baseline. Let's just zoom out here. And you can see it's going to be relatively easy to devise a circuit because it becomes fairly obvious when the plates are sliding past each other. You have the uh, the various waveforms. I suspect when we take the semiconductor apart we'll, uh, we'll see the circuit which does this. Well that was interesting. Before we take the die off to study what's going on let's look at what else is on the circuit board. There's an LCD display. It's uh, connected through some zebra strips on these connections. So we're going to see a relatively high voltage generator on the die because LCDs require that. There's uh, three, four contacts over here. Uh, they go out to a serial data stream. You actually connect a, a measurement device to it. Uh, lots of interesting projects out there. I'll just bring up this one here, um, Arduino caliper reader. You can basically take off the um, 
uh, connections. You can see a serial port. It's a very, very simple circuit. It's one transistor to uh, to actually get a data stream out. I'll put the link to this particular pro project. It's uh, very well described, but uh, if you're ever looking for a cheap way of doing position sensing, uh, a low-cost caliper uh, is, is actually good to go. All right. Um, other than that, I think there's some push buttons up here, so we'll see some digital simple uh, input uh, pins. Let's uh, take the semiconductor off the board, uh, drop some acid, and uh, study the silicon die. All right, well, here's the silicon die. You can, of course, see that it's probably a micron meter uh, process node. First things first, let's see if we can find the uh, vendor of the actual integrated circuit. Sync Moss, uh, if you type that into a browser, you'll find the company uh, out of uh, Taiwan. Uh, if you look at their catalog, it looks like they sell a lot of processors uh, commercially, but they also look like they're a design shop and they'll build custom. Couldn't see this part on the actual sh uh, website. What are we looking at? Well, on the outside, of course, uh, as always, these are the I.O. pads. A fair significant number of them, of course, since it has to drive that LCD and all the signaling. Uh, more importantly, if you look down in the uh, corner here, this is probably the LCD interface. Um, each of these areas in the middle, uh, basically, where you see a lot of uh, black lines. These are individual transistors. I only took this at a relatively low magnification, but you can see the transistors lay out in arrays. No, yeah, there are there a lot? No, obviously, there's, there's hundreds of transistors here. Um, old process, and the nice thing about old processes, though, is they have very low leakage, so we put a little battery into those cells. They uh, will actually last a fair bit of time. This one's got you kind of interesting. It almost looks like it's a memory structure, um, but there's not enough gates there to be really be a processor, but it wouldn't be maybe too unusual to see that the control function is some sort of sequencer that uh, sequences through it. Uh, good evidence of some analog functions and not too much surprise because obviously the signals coming back from the capacitive coupling have to be reconditioned into a, a digital format. So, well, there we go. Uh, actually, a fair bit going on this die. Uh, as always, I'll put the actual die onto my blog, electronicupdate.blogspot.com. Uh, if you'd like to take actually a, a deeper look at it, it's a fairly large file. Let's just go back to the circuit board and set down some more complexity. Uh, so we know these eight signals are coming out and they're being driven onto this uh, circuit board here. You can see the pattern. There's only eight signals and they get repeated. So, of course, there's going to be some sort of aliasing going on. But you can see in the early ones that the pattern actually steps out slightly different, which I presume helps the uh, electronic circuit to decide how fast these fingers are going across. So it's called a vernier caliper because the key, or sorry, the spacing of these fingers here and the space of these fingers here are least slightly off in a ratio. And then through the magic of photolithography, which allows you to hold really constant dimensions very, very cheaply, uh, this very inexpensive circuit, you've had these for like under five dollars sometimes, uh, can re uh, achieve like 0 0.01 millimeter uh, precision with an incredible repetitive. So um, another testament to the cleverness of engineering. If you want to uh, take a longer look at the uh, photographs, I have a copy of my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.